Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management Ratios. We are doing every possible MCQ that is there in the module along with the logic of each and everything. The MCQs of entire costing subject are already there on our YouTube channel arranged in a playlist form of each and every chapter separately. Request you all to be going through that also in case of any difficulty. Okay. And these MCQs are of great use, but provided that you answer, you comment before I say the final answer. Okay. So let's start it off. Let's see what we all have today. The question is. Equity multiplier in reference to DuPont chart allows the investor to see. Okay, bring me the four options, please. What portion of interest on debt can be covered from earnings available to equity shareholders? Okay. B in this case, how many times preference shares interest be paid from the earnings available to the equity shareholders? Okay. C. What portion of return on equity is a result of debt? Okay. And lastly, fourth, how many times equity is multiplied to get the value of debt? Now, you might have done DuPont chart. Now, DuPont chart was made by a gentleman whose surname was DuPont because there are many things that uh, goes on in the markets like, you know, that DuPont, it's not. It, DuPont, it is the surname of a person. Now, this kind of a theory was very famous. Okay. Initially, we used to try to have a two form DuPont chart, but now it is three form that is there in the module. So <clears throat> before I try to be saying the logic and explain in case you want to be commenting, then this is the right time to be doing it. I expect you all to be commenting A, B, C and D. DuPont, we try to break ROE into three parts. And this is the last part of that. If somebody wants a hint. Okay, so in this case, let's do this. <coughs> ROE is nothing but profit for equity divided by equity shareholders funds. This is one formula. But we try to be saying this can be broken up into many parts. Let's try to see the parts of this. Now, under the recent things, we try to divide this into three parts. The first part, the first part is basically the net profit ratio. That is nothing but profit for equity upon sales. Profit for equity means PAT minus preference dividend. This is the first part of this. Okay. So your ROE depends upon the margin that you're going to be getting whenever you're going to be selling your goods. That is first thing. Okay. The second part. Second part in this case is sales upon net assets is also called as asset turnover ratio. How much rupees of sales you are getting for every rupee invested. Okay. This is your second part. And the third part is nothing but equity multiplier. Third part in this case is nothing but net assets upon equity shareholders. This is the third and the final part. Now the first one tells us the rate at which you're going to be earning the profit on your sales. Second part tells you how effectively you are using your assets to generate your sales. Okay. The third part is nothing but equity multiplier. You multiply first ratio, second ratio and third ratio. You will arrive at the top ratio that is ROE. We are interested in this third part. This is nothing but equity multiplier. Let's try to get the details of that now. So therefore the formula of equity multiplier is nothing but net assets upon equity shareholders funds that we saw right now. Now, what does this thing tell me? It tells me that it tells me that how much of the assets are financed by equity shareholders. Obviously, there are two forms of capital. One is your shareholders funds. Others is nothing but your debenture capital. So therefore, try to think that this ratio is two is to one. That means uh, if your net, if your net assets are two, one rupee out of that is financed by equity shareholders. Obviously the other half will be financed by what your debt. We always say debt is a two edged sword. Okay. Two edged sword debt means risk. Why? Because you have to be paying interest. So therefore, in case you're going to be taking more amount of debt, one thing that will certainly happen is that risk will increase, but then it is beneficial also because cost of debt KD is always lesser than KE. So therefore you will start to get 
something called as a benefits of trading on equity. Okay, so that is why this equity multiplier is used. Companies can use this equity multiplier to increase their ROE. You all will understand if equity shareholders funds become less and debt capital will increase more, other two parts remaining the same also, ultimately ROE will start to be rising. Okay, so our question was this. In this case, A, what portion of interest on debt can be covered from earnings available to the equity shareholders? Fla uh, frankly, there is nothing but in this case, kind of interest coverage ratio, not interested in that. B, how many times preference shares? Okay, I'm not interested in that. This is not about the preference shares in any case. What portion of return on equity is a result of debt? Yes. So therefore, in this case, out of all the answers, C makes maximum sense because as I told, equity multiplier, suppose if it is 2 is to 1, that means out of 2 rupees of assets, 1 rupee is financed by equity shareholders. Obviously, rest is financed by what? Yeah, debt. So indirectly, debt comes into existence in this entire formula. Fourth one, how many times equity is multiplied to get the value of the debt? That is all a nonsense statement only. So out of the four options, my bet is on C. Let's see. Yeah, that's the correct answer. I'll see you all next time with another MCQ. Bye. Take care.